In today's lesson, I'm going to talk about spanning sets. From our previous lectures, we know that if we are given a set S and we get the span of S, it is not simply a subset of V, but it's actually a subspace of the entire set V. This is your V. What we want to consider in this lesson is that what will happen if the span of S is the entire vector space V. So we have our S over here. And the span of S is the entire vector space V. We want to consider this. If that is the case, just like what we have here, if the span of S is the entire vector space V, we say that S is a spanning set of V or S spans V. What this means is that every element in V is a linear combination of the vectors in S. So this means that if we get an arbitrary element in V, we can always write it as a linear combination. So if V is in V, then we can find scalars A1 up to An such that V is equal to A1 V1 plus A2 V2, and so on. These scalars always exist. Let us take a look at some examples of spanning sets. Let us consider the vector space Rn. Suppose that E1 is the column vector, where 1 is on the first position, and then you have 0 elsewhere. For E2, you have 1 on the second position, and then 0 elsewhere. So just like in here, En, you have 1 on the last position and 0 elsewhere. In general, if we have Ei, you have 1 on the ith position and 0 everywhere. This vectors span Rn. So if we let S, this is saying that if S is equal to E1 up to En, this set span the entire vector space Rn. Why is that? Let us recall that if you're saying that S spans Rn, it means that every element here can be written as a linear combination of the elements here. What is an arbitrary vector in Rn? An arbitrary vector in Rn looks like this, A1 up to An. Correct? How do we write it as a linear combination of 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on? What are the constants that we will write here? This will be for E1, we multiply it by scalar E1. For E2, we multiply it by the scalar E2 here, and so on. Correct? This vector A1 up to An is now equal to A1, E1 plus A2, E2 and so on up to An, En. So this is now telling us that every vector in Rn can be written as a linear combination of these Eis. Another example, let's look at a spanning set for Pn. Again, recall that Pn is a set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. So therefore, the vectors in Pn are simply polynomials. So therefore, these are vectors in Pn. And they span the vector space Pn because if we get an arbitrary polynomial, it is written of this form, correct? A0 plus A1x and so on plus Anx and n. This is exactly your vectors a1, x, up to xn, and then these are your scalars. How about this one? So let's look at a spanning set for m22. How did I define this matrices here? Look at e1, 1. You have 1 on the 1, 1 entries. e12, you have 1 on the 1, 2 position and 0 elsewhere. Correct? So this vector span M22. Why is that? Again, you get an arbitrary element from M22. 
What is an arbitrary element in M22? You have A11, A12, A21, A22. How do we write it as a linear combination of these matrices over here? What are the constants that we will write in front of this matrices over here? So for this one, we will put A11. This is E12. I will put A12. This is A21. And lastly, here I will multiply it by A22. Correct? If you add all of this, you will get this matrix over here. So that tells us that this set really spans the entire set M22. Now, in general, if we consider the set of all M by N matrices, what will be a span of that? We will just do what we did in the previous example. We will define EIJ to be the matrix containing 1 on the IJ entry and 0 elsewhere. So you have here, this is i row and this is the jth column. And you have 0 elsewhere. So if we collect all of these EIJs, this set will span the entire MMN. What we want to do in the next few slides is that we're given a set S and we want to know if it spans the entire vector space. So here is one example. You have these three vectors in R3 and we want to know if this spans the entire vector space R3. How do you test for a spanning set? Remember that the first step is to get an arbitrary element in V. And then the second step is to just show that you can write it as a linear combination of your given set S. So these are the steps in showing that a given set S spans the entire vector space V. All right, so let's start. In our example here, our V is R3. What is an arbitrary element in R3? It is of the form A, B, C, correct? It's just an ordered triple. And what we want to do is to find scalars that we can multiply to V1, V2, and V3. Want to find those scalars there such that when you add these vectors over here, you will get A, B, C. That is our goal. Let me just write it here. A, B, C is equal to, I'll call it A1. My V1 is 1, 1, 2 plus this one. Say that scalar is A2 times V2 is 1, 0, 1 plus A3 times 2, 1, 3. What equation will we get here? The right-hand side is equal to A1 plus A2 plus 2A3. Then A1 plus A3. And then for the last, it's 2A1 plus A2 plus 3A3. I'll copy this. A, B, C. So I have A is equal to A1 plus A2 plus 2A3. B is equal to A1 plus A3. And lastly, C is 2A1 plus A2 plus 3A3. Then what are we going to do? We want to see whether we can find this constants A1, A2, and A3. So this is just a system of linear equations. Let us form the augmented matrix. This is for A1, A2, A3, and this is for your column vectors here. A, B, C. This is 1, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2, 1, 3. So we want to know whether this one has a solution. So again, we will use Gaussian elimination. 
So in this case, I turned this to zeros. I performed this row operation. So I got this matrix. Now take note that this row and this row are scalar multiples of each other, right? So therefore, if I subtract R2 from R3, I will get a row of zeros. This would be C minus B minus A. What is this saying if you have a row of zeros? This is saying now that if C minus B minus A is not equal to zero, then you have no solution. Correct? You have no solution. Suppose that C is equal to 3, B is equal to 2, and A is equal to 0. C minus B minus A is equal to 1. So the vector 0, 2, 3 is not a linear combination of the vectors V1, V2, up to V3. So therefore, the answer here is no. Let's have one more example. So in this case, we already know that this one would really span the entire P3, the set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3. So let us show that this is really true. So what will we do? We get an arbitrary element in P3. What would be an arbitrary element in P3? So it's of the form V0 plus V1 X plus V2 X squared plus P3x cubed. And we want to see if we can write it as a linear combination of this 1, 2, 3, 4 vectors over here. So those are my vectors. I will multiply them by A1, A2, A3, and A4. So that's why I did not use AIs here because I will be using them on this side. When are two polynomials equal? Two polynomials are equal if their coefficients are equal. So we will just equate the coefficients. So first, let us start with the constants. Our constant on this side is V0. On this side, our constant is A3 plus 3A4. The coefficient of x on this side, we have B1. On this side, we have A2. Just A2. Coefficient of x squared. On this side, we have B2. On this side, we have A1 plus 2A3. And lastly, the coefficient of x cubed. On this side is B3. On the other side is just A1. So we now have the system of linear equations. Let me write it here. We now form the augmented matrix. This column is for A1. Zero, zero, one, three. This is B0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. This is B1. We have 1, 0, 2, 0, B2, and 1, 0, 0, 0. This is B3. I want you to take a look at the coefficient matrix that we obtained. What is happening here, class? Take note that this just records the coefficients. So this is for the constants. This is for the constant. This coefficient of x, x squared, and x cubed. Let me call this v1. Let me call this v2. This is v3 and v4. Take note, this is for v1, v2, v3, v4. So what do we have here? Look at this. V1 is x squared plus x cubed. That's it. x squared plus x cubed. V2 is just x, right? And then V3 is 1 plus 
2x squared, and then v4 is just 3. Look at this one. You just have 3. So that's a good um, shortcut so that you don't have to go through equating the coefficients. You can use that trick if you are on the vector space Pn in general. You will just record the coefficients of each vector. Now for this example, I will no longer use Gaussian elimination. I will just take a look at my coefficient matrix here. I can see a lot of zeros, right? So what I will do here is I will just look at the determinant of this augmented matrix. Look at my fourth row. It has exactly one non-zero entry. So I will compute the cofactor expansion along the fourth row. So this is plus, minus, plus, minus. So I have minus and then times 1. That's the coefficient. And remove. I have 0, 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0. Again, I have, I can either use row 2 or row 3 or column 3, column 1. It's up to you. I always use the row or column containing exactly one non-zero entry. So I will use this second row here. So I have plus minus. So this is negative one and then I have another negative one times one there, right? Times the determinant of what's the resulting matrix? This and this. So I have one, three, two, zero. And this determinant is equal to 0 minus 6. So that's negative 6 times positive 1. So the determinant is negative 6. What is the implication if you get that the determinant is not equal to 0? If the determinant is not equal to 0, that means that A is invertible. And if A is invertible, what is so important about invertible matrices? We know that if you have ax equals b, then this one has a solution always for any b, for any b, a inverse b, correct? So whatever this is, whatever entries you have there, you can always find a solution. And therefore, that means that your a1, a2, a3, and a4, you will always find such constants. So that tells us that this one really spans P3. So remember that a shortcut, if the question asks you to show that it really spans, show that the determinant of the coefficient matrix is equal to zero. Let's have another example. Suppose that u and v are two vectors in a vector space v and we want to show that these two sets would be equal. Now, to show that the span of these two sets are equal, let us recall when are two sets equal. They are equal if and only if one set is a subset of another and also the other set is the subset of the other set. So this is what we want to do. First, we will show that the span of u plus 2v, u minus v, is a subset of span of uv. Now here is a technique. If you're showing that this span is inside this span, what you need to do is to just get an element here in this set and show that it is a linear combination of this. u plus 2v is already written as a linear combination of u and v. That's 1 times u plus 2 times v, right? And u minus v is already a linear combination of u and v. That's 1 times u plus negative 1 times v. Correct? Next, we'll go to the other one. Span of uv show that it is a subset of the other set. Span of u plus 2v and u minus v. So first, I will show that we can write u as a linear combination of u plus 2v and u minus v. What would be the constants that we would have here? And we will show that v can be written as 
a linear combination also of this. Let's say B1 and B2. So first, let us do this. I will just put this one here. Just like with polynomials, you will just equate the coefficient. So for the coefficient of u on this side is equal to 1. Here, what's the coefficient of u? We have a1 plus a2. Next, for the coefficient of v, here you have no coefficient for v, so 0. But here I have 2a1 minus a2. If you like this in its augmented form, a1 plus a2, so that's 1, 1, and then 1. This is 2, negative 1, and then 0. Will this one have a solution? Well, you don't have to really compute, although you can compute for it, but for me, I prefer not to solve it because I know that I have What's the determinant of this? The determinant is equal to negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. And that determinant is not equal to 0. So that tells us that, yes, you can find a1 and a2. So that tells us that you can find a1 and a2. I will no longer do that. Check that a1 is 1 third and a2 is 2 thirds. I am looking at this one can relate V as a linear combination of U plus 2V and Q minus V. Coefficient of U here is 0, but here it's B1 plus B2. Here the coefficient of V is 1 on the right hand on the left hand side. On the right hand side, it's 2B1 plus B2. The augmented matrix is 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1. And again, look at the coefficient matrix here. The determinant is 1 minus 2, negative 1. Again, not equal to 0. So therefore, this one has a solution. So you can find B1 and B2. Since we have shown that these two are true, then the span of UV is really inside the span of this set. We can use the previous technique that we studied a while ago in showing that M22 is really spanned by these four matrices. Take note that if we will use the first method wherein you will get an arbitrary B11, B12, B21, B22, you can do that. Find those constants again. Right, but again, it will take a little bit of time. So, what I will do for this example is use our previous information that the span of your E11, E12, this is the entire M22, correct? From our previous slide, this is the matrix wherein the 1, 1 entry is 1 and 0 elsewhere, right? So what we will do, I will call this set S. I will show that the span of this set is the same as the span of S. Understand? And to do that, I will just call this V1, V2, V3, and V4. We will use the technique earlier wherein we will show that one set is a subset of another and vice versa. Which one is obvious here? Well, definitely the span of S is inside the span of this set. Because how do we do this? Get arbitrary element here and show that it is a linear combination of this four. And obviously, these are in M22. So definitely, we can let them as a linear combination of this four matrices. Correct? We have shown that in our previous slide. In particular, V1 is... 1 times E11 and the rest 0. V2, it has an entry on 1, 1 and 2, 2 position. So it's E11 plus E22. 
your V3, it has an entry on 1, 2 position. So, it's E1, 2 plus, E2, 1. And lastly, V4 is your E1, 1 plus, E1, 2 plus, E2, 2. Correct? Now, we will show the other way around. We will now show that the span of E11 is inside the span of S. So how do we go about that? We get this elements here and show that we can write it as a linear combination of this four matrices. So let's start with E11. This is E11. 1, 0, 0. But that's exactly V1, correct? So that's 1 times V1. We're done with E11. About E12, look at that, that's equal to 1, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 1 here. You get E12, right? Next, we want to show that E21 can be written as a linear combination of this four. Let's call that A. Equating coefficients again for the 1, 1 entry, we get that A plus B plus D is 0. For the 1, 2 entry, we get that C plus D equals 0. For the 2, 1 entry, get 1 is equal to C. And for the 2, 2 entry, we have B plus so we have that C is equal to 1. So that means here that D is negative 1, which means here that B is equal to 1. And therefore, lastly here, we have A plus B plus D is 0. So A is also equal to 0. So there you go. We were able to write E21 as this one will be 0. This is equal to 1 times V2. So that be power B. So that's 1 V2. Our C is 1 plus V3 minus V4. Lastly, we have E22. For E22, take note that it is just equal to v2 minus v1 correct so that's negative one you have this and you remove this one over here so there you go so we have just shown that each of this e11 e12 up to e22 we were able to write them as a linear combination of v1 v2 v3 and v4 so therefore they span the same set but since this one here spans M22. That completes our conclusion that the answer here is yes. Let us recall in our previous lecture that the polynomial 1 plus 5x plus x squared does not lie in the span of this. What is an implication of that? Since we were able to find a polynomial in P2, this is in P2, which does not lie here, that means that this set cannot span P2. In this lesson, we use the definition of determining whether a given set spans the entire vector space. However, in our succeeding lessons, we will see that there is a faster way of checking whether a given set spans the entire vector space. In order to do that, we need first to understand the concepts of linear independence basis and dimension and we will do that in our succeeding lessons.